I forgot to record it. So, uh, before to uh, introduce our speaker, let me remind you uh, about four things. First, the virtual tech talk is going to be recorded, as you can see, and uh, we will upload it tomorrow on uh, YouTube channel. And uh, you can check my LinkedIn account tomorrow so that you can uh, attend it again if you want. The second thing is the code of conduct, which is a uh, real simple actually. Uh, behave good to each other, okay? Don't write uh, things that uh, are not appropriate. Third is that you can ask your questions on the chat on the right of your screen, and uh, Athena will answer them at the end of her talk. And the last one is that in the end of uh, this virtual tech talk, we will have uh, our competition. Athena is going to ask you something. I don't know what it would be also. And uh, the fastest person who is going to answer correct will get the one year free subscription from JetBrain. And uh, there is going to be a gift from uh, our speaker, I think, as well. Maybe she can do some head backing. Yes. Great. So with that uh, said, let me introduce you to our speaker, Athena. Our friendship uh, started about uh, six years ago uh, when she came to the Saloniki, my hometown, her hometown as well, and visited my dojo to practice kendo with uh, her husband, Andrew. I have a picture of uh, that moment. I can share it later on, but not now. From uh, that day, I started watching her career. Uh, she became a PhD and she's doing an amazing uh, job with STEM, diversity, quality, a combination of all of them, above the all, everything. And I'm really glad that Athena is uh, one of my daughter's uh, role model. But uh, it's time for our speaker to talk. Enough for me. Athena, the stage is yours. Thank you. Wow. Uh, thank you for this amazing introduction. <laughs> I'm so honored. Uh, I'm really glad I'm here. And thank you very much for inviting me. And thanks to everyone who um, is here with us today. Um, so yeah, so Elias said everything about how we know each other, <laughs> too much information. Uh, and yes, yeah, so I, I'm Athena Fanzana and I am currently working as an equality, diversity and inclusion in STEM, in science and technology uh, environments and trying to help uh, uh, people, organizations, companies to create inclusive uh, workplaces. Um, so one of the, the services I offer um, is uh, the uh, coaching programs about uh, how to manage imposter syndrome. And this is what we're going to talk um, about today. And also I help uh, uh, people, uh, again, workplaces to set up uh, mentoring schemes. And this is another part of our uh, talk uh, today. Um, so I think I should go straight to um, start with the talk so we can then have uh, time to discuss uh, uh, more things and, and you to ask questions. So I'm going to share my screen. I have a little presentation. Um, so let me see how this works. Uh, Papa, I have like five million windows open, but I'll find it. Just give me a second. Uh, where are you? There you are. Okay, just let me know if that works. Great, we can see it. Perfect. Uh, yes, it's okay. just not from not from the start. <laughs> uh, wrong slide. Um, there we are. So this. So imposter syndrome. Um, I I bet. Uh, most of you know or heard of it is quite a, quite a big thing right now. Um, but I, I, what I find from my experience and through my work is that uh, most people just uh, hear about like, oh, imposter syndrome is something that we all have. It's about confidence, um, lack of confidence and all these things, but they still don't know exactly what it is and how you, we can deal with that and how much it affects our life and, and especially in uh, our work life. Um, so uh, 
I am going to try here today to, to do an introduction to imposter syndrome and basically discuss a little bit about what exactly it is, how we can identify it in ourselves, um, the types of imposter syndrome, uh, because there are various uh, ways that you can feel in, in, an imposter and uh, every different type has their own way to deal with. Um, so we'll see about that as well. Um, a couple of recommendations on how you can uh, manage your imposter feelings and uh, one of them obviously being uh, to find a mentor. So um, let's go straight and discuss about uh, what imposter syndrome is. So uh, the term imposter syndrome or imposter phenomenon was first coined in 1978 by the clinical psychologist Pauline Clance and Susan Eames in a paper with the title The Imposter Phenomenon in High Achieving Women, Dynamics and Therapeutic Intervention. Um, so they, they have defined uh, three main characteristics which if you um, feel that you have, that means that you um, is possibly uh, suffer from imposter syndrome. So these three main characteristics are, as you can see, the belief that others have inflated view of your abilities or skills, the fear that you will be found out and exposed as a fake, the persistent uh, attribution of success to external factors such as lack or an extraordinary level of hard work. So if you if you have this kind of thoughts about uh, yourself, your abilities, um, that is very likely that you are suffering from imposter syndrome. Even though uh, the first observation, as you can see, happened for high achieving women, imposter uh, syndrome um, uh, symptoms um, have now been noticed on other individuals, which obviously not only women, um, and a lot of groups of people, a variety of groups of people, um, such as, for example, um, someone who is newly qualified in their field, someone who's starting a new career, a new course, a new education, or someone who's being promoted at work. And then we have specific categories of people and lifestyles that are also um, at high risk of uh, imposter syndrome, such as students and academics, highly successful people, people that follow atypical routes, which can be here women in tech, for example, to make it uh, more relevant to to the audience, uh, people with high achieving parents, people in arts creative fields, first generation professionals, underrepresented groups, self-employed loan workers. Again, they are very specific groups, but also quite broad groups. So for example, underrepresented groups can be, again, women in tech environments or um, other minorities like ethnic minorities, LGBTQ uh, plus people and so on. Um, I don't know if you uh, belong in any of this or you identify yourself uh, in any of this. Um, if you do, so again, it's very likely that you suffer from imposter syndrome. And as you understand, all these people at some point in their life or more often, they feel that they have no idea what they're doing. So Clance and Eames also explained that there are three main stages of imposter syndrome. Um, which uh, also lead to a variety of behaviours um, that can be identified as symptoms of imposter syndrome. So the first stage is low expectancy of success. You don't expect yourself to, to be successful, to achieve things. Then the next stage is when you notice your success but you feel that you don't worth it. And the third stage is when you attribute your success to lack and external factors. You can be at any stage, you can, you can be at the first stage or the, the last stage and you have gone through all of this, uh, it doesn't matter that the imposter syndrome is still there, it just can develop as you can see if you don't do something to, to deal with it. Um, so then uh, the symptoms that you can see um, uh, from the imposter syndrome um, are working hard, exceptionally, um, working exceptionally hard, sorry, hiding true opinions, fighting a spirit to impress, perfectionism, undermining achievements, discounting praise, sabotaging performance. These are all things that you might be doing because you feel the imposter feelings kicking in, uh, because you think that you need to do a lot more to prove yourself, to, 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 to make yourself worthy of the success and the achievements that you actually achieve by yourself.
So if you identify yourself again with any of this, um, again, it's very likely you're, like, you're suffering from imposter syndrome, so stay tuned because we're going to see what we can do about it. One thing, of course, we need to uh, mention here and make clear is that imposter syndrome or imposter phenomenon, which sometimes is better to call, to call it, uh, is not uh, a mental illness. So because the, the, the syndrome might bring uh, in mind something related to, to a, a medical uh, case or something like that. So we have to make clear that imposter syndrome is not classified as mental illness or condition by the Diagnostic Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders. Uh, so that means that you will not need a prescription in order to deal with it. But uh, it might appear that um, imposter syndrome has uh, some common symptoms, some similar symptoms uh, with other uh, mental illnesses such as obsessive compulsive disorder or social anxiety disorder. But these um, conditions, they also have other symptoms. And if you, um, if you think that you have these symptoms, then you, you, you will need to seek medical help and advice. So um, the other thing we need to also mention is that uh, if we don't deal with our imposter syndrome, it's very likely that it might lead to uh, more serious um, conditions, mental health conditions, okay? So uh, there are implications that uh, imposter syndrome might have a scientific explanation. And that's because there is a, an opposite case to imposter syndrome that has been scientifically uh, described. This is the Dunning-Kruger effect. I don't know if any of you have um, has heard that. Uh, this is the tendency of poor performers to overestimate their, their abilities, which is kind of the opposite of the imposter syndrome, where usually the more skilled you become, the more you feel like a, like a fraud. So, so both cases basically is a battle between perception and reality, is um, between what you think it happens um, opposite to what actually happens to the facts, okay? So it's thoughts against facts. Um, another thing to, to, to clarify, as I said at the start, uh, imposter syndrome has a lot of types. So you can be any type of this. You can you can feel um, in different ways of other people that suffer from imposter syndrome, but and and again, all of them have different ways to deal with. Uh, but in the end of the day, as we said, is very much uh, ha has to do with how you uh, think of yourself, how you you self reflect, and then um, what uh, help um, you are um, you're seeking to deal with your imposter syndrome, and we will get there. Uh, so these are the types. So as you can see in the um, on the slide, so we have the perfectionist, which uh, it's obvious is a person who thinks that everything they do um, it must be perfect. We, th we then have the superman, superwoman, or super person even that uh, has to be great at everything. The natural genius that. Um, Obviously, they, they think that they have to get everything right uh, and uh, the, 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 first, the first attempt. Uh, we have the rugged individual um, that they feel that they can do any, everything by, by themselves and if they ask for help, is uh, it's a failure. And the expert uh, that they have to know everything um, to be an expert. And this is a very, very common uh, for example, type in high achieving people and people in senior positions because they are uh, expected to be seen as experts, so they feel that they need to know everything, and obviously, obviously, this is uh, not the case. Um, so, if you again, um, you can identify again yourself in 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 one of those types. Of course, there are uh, tools and ways that you can uh, find exactly uh, which type of imposter you are. Obviously, we can't do everything now in this short time, but I can. Um, help you with that if you want later. Um, and uh, of course, uh, imposter syndrome uh, or symptoms and all these feelings and all this uh, kind of thoughts, they, uh, they uh, lead to some potential consequences. So what are the problems that imposter syndrome can create in, in our life and our work? So imposter syndrome can uh, minimize interactions with others uh, in fear of being discovered as fraud or as not good enough and leads to isolation. 
Uh, also, uh, the fear of taking up new tasks can kick in and you can create unrealistic targets and standards and that can also lead to um, missing out opportunities. Um, because of imposter syndrome, you can avoid, uh, you usually uh, avoid social moments and events, which again leads to isolation, um, lack of emotional intelligence, uh, you feel unworthy or not good enough, um, so you, you just, uh, you're stuck at the same tasks and the same position and so on, okay? Also, um, you might feel too anxious about these feelings and about work and about thinking that you um, you're not doing very well at work and this can also lead to uh, poor family relationships that you, you kind of like compare yourself to to other members of the family and uh, in order to avoid having to do that and having to to admit uh, that you're not good enough and so on that can also um, lead to isolation um, and of course, as we said, if we don't do anything to deal with all this, uh, all these uh, feelings and consequences can lead to fatigue and depression and even more serious um, mental health issues. So if you, so far, I, I don't want, <laughs> I felt like uh, uh, put too much um, information uh, in front of you and maybe a little bit of heavy stuff. Um, so, so, so I don't want to disappoint you or make you feel that uh, imposter syndrome is terrible. And if you suffer from it, uh, you can't do anything. And it's, uh, it's, it's a very serious thing. Um, if you suffer from imposter syndrome, you are not alone. Uh, because research shows that uh, more than 70% of people, uh, both men and women, at some point in their careers, in their life, they um, feel like an imposter. And also research and professionals uh, have uh, proved that there are ways that you can move beyond your imposter and become the best version of yourself. So the journey to, uh, to beat imposter syndrome starts with identifying your imposter feelings, acknowledging that you do suffer. So I hope that what we said so far uh, helped you think if you actually suffer from imposter syndrome or not. And then you have to start self-reflecting and thinking the underlying reasons. Why would you have these feelings? And um, are there certain people that create these feelings to you? Are there such a, certain occasions that create these feelings to you? Um, the next step then is to obviously take the brave um, step and decide that you want to change, that decide that you want to battle uh, imposter syndrome. And then you work on a plan on um, focusing on positive behaviors and facts, as we said, and where you show yourself some compassion and some credit uh, for what you have achieved. It's really important to focus on facts because, as we said, uh, imposter syndrome is a battle between what actually happens and what you think it happens. So having a strong self-awareness of your personal successes is the first step to overcoming imposter syndrome. Equally important is to focus on your strengths and be clear on your strengths because people who suffer from imposter syndrome tend to overlook their strengths and focus on, uh, on their weaknesses. And the trick here is to use your strength, to, to manage to use your strengths and achievements to counter your weaknesses and your imposter feelings. So one way to do that is by writing down writing down your strengths and weaknesses and reflect on them. How can you use what you're good at to counter the things that you think you're not good at? Uh, I know it sounds a little bit complicated, but if you actually write down your strengths and your weaknesses and reflect on them, you can find ways and combinations to, uh, to, to work on them, work with them. The other thing you can do, and that was a very, very good advice from a professor at the University of Edinburgh where I um, studied, I did my PhD. She told me that uh, when she gets uh, these feelings, when she, she starts feeling uh, like an imposter, 
she she grabs that folder where she has written all the nice things that they that she has done or she has been told and that instantly gives uh gives her a boost um on, on her confidence so this is another thing you can do um and it's an, it's one of the exercises i recommend to um the people i, I usually coach for for imposter syndrome uh, you write down your achievements and you again reflect on them and you go back to them every time you um, you feel that your confidence is uh, going down. So it's really important to acknowledge and embrace embrace your capabilities and focus on facts. This is this is a vital a uh, vital step in the process of uh, overcoming imposter syndrome. So these are all uh, steps at the right direction. Um, and they're, they're very good and they, they, they use, they're very useful, very effective. And I know that from personal experience um, and people that I coach, they find this all very useful. But the most effective thing that happens to them is the fact that they can talk to me about it. That my, my position as a coach and as a mentor to them so it has been proved that the most effective ways for someone to, to, to be clear on their goals, their achievements, and boost their confidence in personal development is talking to someone. Especially talking to someone who um, is usually more experienced, um, most likely from a similar or related uh, background. Um, I can almost guarantee that this can help you reduce, reduce your fears, gain new perspective on who you are and where you're going in life and in, in your work and your career, how to deal with difficulties um, and achieve your goals. So even if, if, and if you're just sharing these feelings with someone, um, I, mean, I mean, if someone has done this, I, I bet you understand what I'm talking about. So even just sharing your feelings, articulating them for the other person to understand them, it helps. It helps you to, to self-reflect and evaluate these feelings. And this is what a mentor can do for you. Uh, for those who don't know what a mentor is and uh, how it works with uh, the mentoring relationship and so on, this is what the deal is very, very briefly. Oops, I missed that. It's okay. So, uh, so mentoring is about supporting, reflecting and encouraging through a learning and developing journey. It's a two-way relationship with mutual trust and respect. Um, so the mentor is there to, to support you to help you through this journey on self-reflection and, and personal development. What you can expect to make that clear, what you can expect from a mentor is for, for them to listen and ask questions, to, to review facts, to provide options and alternatives, to examine your goals and your approaches, to serve feelings and encourage the progress. So basically, um, you talk to the mentor, the mentor helps you with questions and with methods and techniques to, for you to identify yourself, to identify your feelings, your goals, your intentions, your thoughts, and reflect and evaluate. You should not expect from your mentor uh, to tell you exactly what to do, to give you um, ready-made solutions or to guarantee success. And, and most importantly, uh, you should not expect from them to do things for you. That uh, is uh, not how mentoring works. So by developing this relationship, you will be receiving constant feedback and guidance from a more experienced person. Most likely this person has been through similar situations, uh, has faced uh, uh, the, the same struggles and has found ways to deal with them. So now it's time to pass this knowledge to, uh, to you. From my personal experience, uh, again, as a mentor, but as also as a mentee, um, I can guarantee that a mentor can hugely help you uh, clear, uh, become clear with your thoughts, and your feelings take action towards overcoming imposter syndrome and achieve your goals. But also to talk scientifically, um, 
there are studies that, uh, for example, show that mentoring can help women in, in STEM, women in uh, science and uh, tech environments to boost their confidence, increase their sense of belonging, and also feel more, identify themselves more as scientists, as part of uh, this um, environment. So if your workplace does not provide a formal mentoring scheme um, that can actually uh, you can be assigned to uh, the right mentor for you. There are two options. You can either ask your workplace to set up a mentoring scheme, uh, of course, with the help of a professional, or you can ask someone you trust, um, you respect and admire to become your mentor. This is, a, it's called like informal mentoring, but it, it sometimes for some people works better when you already have, a, uh, have, have identified a person that you feel that um, has experience that, uh, the experience that you need the, to help you, um, just, just go for it, okay? And to sum up, because too much information and I really want to, to chat with you, um, I just have to, uh, to, to make clear that uh, you should don't feel discouraged if your imposter feelings uh, do not vanish quickly or completely. It's very likely that it will never go away 100%, but with the help uh, of, of yourself by self-reflecting and understanding and acknowledging your feelings and your thoughts, and then also acknowledging the facts and your strengths and your achievements, uh, you will manage to uh, manage your imposter feelings rather than completely eliminate them. Uh, and this is again, um, your mentor's help, uh, mentor's uh, position is to help you uh, make this uh, process easier and maybe uh, even more enjoyable. And finally, um, a friendly reminder that almost everyone doubt themselves at some point in their life. Even those who appear to be extremely confident and that they know uh, what they're doing. The key, the key is to find uh, the best ways for you to, to deal with it and uh, to acknowledge that um, it's not a bad thing. It's something that happens to everyone, um, but there are ways to, 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 uh, to, go of, to, to get over it. Um, so, okay, so I believe that this is a, a good introduction of, uh, of the topic and uh, a couple of uh, little tips of uh, how you can identify your imposter syndrome and how you can deal with that. And then uh, absolutely recommendation of finding a mentor to help you uh, through this process. But um, if you feel that you need more support uh, or you have uh, specific questions, which of course you can ask here, um, but if you think that you have a very, very specific uh, imposter syndrome related uh, issue that you need specialized um, help with, um, I am happy to help. Um, you can just go to my website to do the services. Um, area and uh, you can find my my coaching programs which are one-to-one -one personalized sessions tailored to your needs and also if you uh, want your workplace to to set up a mentoring scheme also I can I can help uh, with that um, I think that's uh, that's my little presentation I'm just going to stop sharing now I hope it wasn't too much <laughs> okay Yes. Actually, we have a lot of questions, so I'm glad that oh, I'm glad that you finished. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I don't want to. I I want to talk to people. I don't want to talk to my screen. Okay, okay. <laughs> to my slides. Okay. okay. Good. So, so, what are the questions? Let's start. First one is uh, from Maria Bloom. How do we mm -hmm. know if we we are good versus if we think? If we just think we are good so how can we distinguish if we have the imposter syndrome or we have the dunning kruger effect right okay so so as we said the the okay uh, that is a tricky question so um so as we said the the imposter syndrome to make it clear is when you are you achieve things but you think that you don't deserve it or that, uh, or you, when you are good at something, but you think that you are not as good, and you always want to do more, and you always feel like you you are um, 
faking it and so on. The Dunning-Kruger is the opposite, is when people uh, who don't achieve very much in their life or they are not very good at what they're doing, they have the um, kind of like fake confidence that they actually are better than they actually are, if that makes clear, if that makes sense. It's a bit complicated, but so, so this is a little bit uh, objective or, or subjective, I would say, because it's up to you. You know where you stand in, in, in your workplace, in your career. So if you think that you have reached a, a place that you have achieved enough or that you have been praised for, for your work, but you think that you are not as good as they people say, they, so then you suffer from imposter syndrome. Okay, so if you are in a position that you haven't done very much, but you think that you have achieved a lot, then it's more likely that you suffer from Dunning Kruger, if that makes any sense. <laughs> Maria, is it okay? I just want to add here that uh, there are actual actual tests and tools that you can identify if you actually suffer from imposter syndrome and maybe uh, uh, Dunning-Kruger as well. But obviously, I cannot um, share everything with you here in in this uh, short time. Uh, this is why I offer workshops and uh, coaching programs to to get deeper into this uh, topics. Okay, great. Mar to the question. Maria says thank you. So, second question is You're from uh, George Panaretos. How much can damage your career path from an individual perspective and also your work environment can recognize if someone is dealing with it? Um, okay, so imposter syndrome can be actually quite harmful for your career if you don't identify it um, and don't do something about it so as we said it can lead to a variety the consequences that i shared with you it can lead to a variety of uh, problematic situations like uh, isolation like um, get, get stuck to the same position because you feel that you're not good enough to apply for a promotion um, i don't know do the same tasks because you are afraid to get uh, to, to try new things uh, which again is very uh, related to to be stuck to the same position, um, a lot of uh, things. Uh, so, so it's really harmful. So, so um, I know it sounds uh, a bit um, difficult to to identify it, but this is where why we were talking about working on that and uh, first step. Try try to self reflect and acknowledge if you actually suffer from that. So then you can find the ways to deal with it. So uh, to, to the, the, the next, the second part of your question about uh, if someone, how we can tell if someone suffers from imposter syndrome, is that right? I think, let me check. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so again. Uh, the work the, environment yeah. can recognize it if someone is dealing with it. Exactly. So if you if you think uh, that someone's uh, self isolate themselves from from the group or they they don't usually participate either in social events or in collaborations, new projects and and such, this might be might be a symptom um, of imposter syndrome. So then uh, it can't be nice for someone to reach out to this person and discuss it with it with him with them because as we said uh for someone who suffers from imposter syndrome it's really important to to, to get help and be able to talk about it uh of course uh, i suppose that you your workplace might have uh, people like hr people or people that deal with equal diverse inclusion things and uh, you can even talk to them and then they will um take it from there so I hope that was useful. Okay, next question is from Apostolos Pelagos. Mm -hmm. uh, have second thoughts. If you think you are one of the best at something, you might want to think again. For me, you need to treat everything with modesty and respect. What do you think about that? Um, where is this? Can I see it? You have <laughs> to scroll up. Uh... <laughs> ah, there it is. I found Great. it. Great. Uh, if you think you are one of the best at something, you might want to think again for me into everything. Um, yes, so that is that. Do you mean that this um, 
that someone who thinks that they are best of someone of, on something they should not um they should not be happy for their for their achievement is that what you mean i'm sorry i'm not sure what your point is here if you want to explain it we can move to the next question and if okay. uh, uh if apostolos wants to give us more um explanation apostolos we are waiting for your uh, question please re rephrase it next question <laughs> is from andreas Levkatis. are there mm -hmm. any stats indicating increased symptoms in it uh, related jobs in it related jobs um i don't think so that there is such a very specific uh thing uh, i mean there is research in general that shows um for example that women uh, usually um show more uh, of imposter syndrome um symptoms and uh suffer more from that but i don't think there is such a specific thing um a little bit insight from my personal um research uh i can tell again because my research was very focused in computing um programming and advanced computing and i was looking into uh women women's experiences um i can absolutely say uh, 100 that uh, women in tech environments suffer massively from imposter syndrome but but i have also met a lot of men and that is usually the case with uh, more senior uh, positions or people that come from um, backgrounds that are weren't 100% computing related or um, or technical, and then they get a job which is more technical or more into programming, and they feel a little bit imposter by comparison to people that have studied computer science, for example. So I don't have statistics, but um, from my personal experience all these years that I do this research, I, I can tell for sure that this is something that is very common in the IT uh, world. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you for your question. Okay, great. Next question is again from Maria Bloom. Daniel Pink says, we should think strengths, not weakness, because no matter how hard you try, you can just become a little better at your weakness, but your strengths are what make you unique. Writing down your strengths is very important, but I'm not quite sure how you should deal with what you perceive as weakness. What do you think about that? Oh, oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> that's very deep. Um, strength, no weakness, because no matter. Okay, I'm just reading it. Okay, because that's a lot. Um, okay, so yes. Yeah, so as I said, it's really important to to write down strengths and weaknesses. Yes. Yeah, so this is um, an interesting uh, point. Um, it's very much again subjective. So what do you what do you think uh, that is your weakness is something that you you know obviously um by self-reflecting and again as i said there are tools and exercises that can help you uh, identify these things uh, easier and again with the help of a mentor you can go through this process and uh, become clearer on your weaknesses and your strengths but i guess it's it's quite uh, it's quite subjective again um but it can be anything uh, I again from personal experience as a as a coach um, to people uh, who suffer from imposter syndrome, I can tell that uh, people write anything, and we find a way, or even better, they find then a way to use these weaknesses. Uh, sorry, to use their strengths to counter these weaknesses. So uh, it can't be anything. It can be that you're not uh, good at time management. Okay, for example, um, it can be uh, that you don't uh, like using Zoom. <laughs> it can be that can count as weakness. I mean, uh, anything that uh, that uh, affect your your work or your your life, uh, it can be uh, perceived as weakness. I suppose. I hope that was helpful. Okay, great. Okay. So next question is again from Andreas Levkatis. If imposter syndrome is most often relating to work, should we find a mentor that has a background related to our job? Mm -hmm. um, yes. So usually this is this is very helpful. Um, it's it's 
it really depends on what exactly is uh, your um, related to your work. So it's, if it's very specific, um, I don't uh, know exactly what you what you have in mind. But if it's very specific in general, when we are talking about mentoring, for example, when we do the mentoring uh, matching process, with matching mentors with mentees, we take very much into consideration uh, the background. Uh, but in some cases, uh, if the person doesn't have exactly the same background, but has uh, experience in the specific issue that you have, that can also be useful. So um, it's it's very it very much depends on how well you know the person and how well you know that this person has the the, the experience you need for uh, for for them to help you. Okay, so but usually uh, usually having similar background obviously helps because similar background seem means most likely similar struggles, similar uh, challenges uh, uh, throughout their career. So uh, it can be uh, more useful. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. Next question from Yasser Hamam: Is the imposter syndrome caused by the pursuit of ideal success or the person's attempt to be an ideal human being? Could it be because of some toxic relationships in the present or even from the past? Yes, absolutely. Uh, for the second part of the question, this is a, a very common uh, case that uh, it might be uh, toxic uh, relationships uh, very often uh, with uh, parents. For example, parents that they were very um, high uh, achieving people, they usually expect and put a lot of pressure on their children also to, to become very uh, successful. And sometimes this create, uh, creates this comparison um, and you compare yourself to to your parents and so on, or it can be um, uh, brothers and sisters and uh, other members of the family. And also it can also, uh, it's very likely to be friends and uh, other um, close environment. Uh, as for the for the first uh, part of your question, is the impersonal caused by the, yeah. So again, this is, uh, it has a lot to do with the, our perception of reality. It has to do a lot of uh, what the facts are and what we think the facts are. Uh, so this is exactly what the, the where the imposter syndrome uh, actually uh, forms uh, is formed. So uh, basically, you can be a very very successful person, but if you are a perfectionist or if you are a super superwoman or superman and so on, or an expert, all these different types of imposter, <laughs> of imposter, exactly, we, we discussed earlier, you might need uh, uh, more to feel that you have actually uh, achieved a lot. So again, quite subjective, but it's very, very common that we might have achieved a lot, but still not feel that we are good enough. So it's very, it's very much of, uh, how we see ourselves. And then we have the, the opposite, as we said, uh, that we might have not achieved as much, but our perception of our achievements is great. So, which is not uh, necessarily a bad thing, okay? Um, but it's very, very subjective. So you're always in a constant battle with yourself and, and uh, your thoughts and your beliefs rather than the facts that are out there and the reality. So it's, it's a tricky one. Um, okay. okay. Um, Next question. Do we have a question? Yes, we have a lot of okay. questions. Don't worry about that. Hit, hit so, me. Rafael Viana is asking, can, I, can a imposter syndrome appear during the development of a new skill? If yes, how can I mitigate it having the fact that I don't know how to really evaluate my growth? Meaning, when developing a skill, it is hard to really evaluate yourself. True? Very good, very good, very good. Uh, very good question. Absolutely. Um, developing a new skill, starting a new position, starting a new course, this is a very common uh, period of your life that you can feel uh, like an imposter. So in this case, this is where we're talking about using our strengths. So if you think that you are not good at this when you are developing think of other times for example that you have gone through developing a new skill and how did that go and did you manage eventually to 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 be good at it did you manage to do it so then you uh, gain some confidence from that and you keep going or you can ask from uh, help from someone who already 
has the skill to to support you and and become better so there are a lot of ways to to deal with it uh, but if uh, exactly it's very good that you have already identified uh, the imposter feeling there that you know maybe i am not doing it well but uh, but of course i'm not doing it well because i i just started developing it so this is the self reflection process and how can i deal with that Okay, so this is very good. You're in a very, good, very good position right now. So this is how we we self reflect, and then we try to find um, to to go back uh, to our achievements, to our strengths, to to what we are good at, and use all this, um, and maybe good relationships and good networking, a uh, good network to help uh, to get help from to to deal with this. And um, so that's that's a very good uh, uh, question and a very good example. Okay. So thank you. Next question from Amar Alkhuli. Why is it so hard for so many of us to shake the feeling that we are an imposter? Why is it so hard for so many of us to shake the feeling that we are an imposter? Uh, so wh what do you mean? That it's hard to admit it? To admit it to, our, to yourself or to other people? Mm. Can you uh, give us, explain to us, um, so, Amar? So, Amar, can you please rephrase it and write it again? So, we continue scrolling down from Katarina Ferreira. What's the best way to find a mentor? Should we try to find the most relatable person in terms of life story or any mentoring will help us? Um, okay, so the best way is if you if you to, to to try and find if your work find out if your workplace offers um, a mentoring scheme because sometimes they do but people don't know about it. That's quite common at least here in the UK. Um, so that's one. Then if there is a mentoring scheme, then there is a, someone who manages that and they can help you to to find. They will find a mentor for you, and usually uh, they ask you some questions and uh, from that they find the right person, hopefully, for you. Uh, now, if this doesn't exist, uh, as I said uh, in my uh, presentation, you can find yourself a mentor. So that would be in, inform in an informal capacity. Um, that would be someone that you know and trust and you feel that for the specific uh, problem that you have at that moment or for this confidence or for these uh, imposter uh, feelings that you have this person has the experience to help you uh, and that could be in terms of life story or it could be if it's if it's uh, if it's a uh, work related someone who is a senior more experienced or even not as much more experienced but someone that you feel that you can trust to discuss about these feelings uh, this is how usually the informal mentoring works. Um, just to, to clarify that uh, it might not work immediately, that mentoring, m mentoring relationships take a long time to, 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 to develop and uh, to, to gain this absolute trust from both sides to, to actually help you then go through uh, the, the challenges. So give it a go. I absolutely recommend to give it a go if you know someone that uh, you think that they can help you, uh, just go for it. Also, um, just to add uh, that you might have more than one mentors. You know, you don't, you don't, you don't have to have only one mentor. So you can find a mentor that you think that their life experience can help you, but also you can find someone who's more experienced in in your work, um, so they can help you otherwise. So that's absolutely fine. Okay. okay. So I, ho I hope that helps. Next question is from Sofia Regana. Does the environment in which we work play a crucial role in people developing such a syndrome? If so, how can... Let me see it again. Okay. If so, I say how it. can a person <laughs> with imposter symbol but who doesn't know it yet syndrome, can be yeah. helped? Okay. Right, okay, so yes, absolutely the environment plays a role and we already mentioned examples and again, uh, relevant to you and to me the, uh, with women in tech, for example, it's uh, male dominated environments is very common uh, for women to uh, create, to, to develop this, uh, the, this imposter feelings. Uh, so someone who has the imposter syndrome but doesn't know it yet, obviously, um, 
you, the first step, as we discussed uh, earlier, is to identify that you have the imposter syndrome, that you suffer from imposter syndrome, and uh, then the next step to identify why, uh, try to, to, to reflect the, uh, the underlying reasons, which might be the environment that you work very likely. Um, and then, uh, uh, depending on that, you will find a way to, to deal with that or you will ask for the, uh, for, for the right help. Um, so obviously, a person who doesn't know that has a imposter syndrome cannot be helped. And that's why we are discussing about trying to find, uh, identify if you have it or not. Um, so this is why we, we, we talked about it here and I presented uh, various um, types of imposters and if you feel like that, if you if you would identify yourself in these situations, it's very likely that you uh, suffer from imposter syndrome. So that's why I think these kind of um, workshops and talks are very good to happen at workplaces uh, because imposter syndrome is a very common uh, condition to a lot of people at uh, workplaces. Um, so yeah, so uh, I think that covered <laughs> this question. Okay. I, yeah. If, uh, if there are more. Yes, questions. we have uh, two from Golfo. So first uh, question mm -hmm. from Golfo: Can becoming a mentor uh, help with imposter syndrome? Probably she's asking if someone is uh, has in, has the imposter syndrome can become a mentor. Um, yes, absolutely. Um, the mentoring relationship, as I said. Uh, Obviously, apologies, we don't have enough time to expand very much on everything. But if you're interested in these topics, we can do more stuff. Um, so, and obviously, you can reach out to me and we can have more discussions and, and sessions if you want. But absolutely, um, a mentor uh, can be also helped through the mentoring relationship because it's, it's a two-way relationship. and. Uh, helping another person also helps you to self-reflect and the way you are trying to to make the other person um understand their own feelings maybe help you to think about your own uh situation and by giving feedback to someone uh, also you can uh give feedback to yourself so absolutely 100 percent uh, a mentor can also be helped uh with their imposter syndrome and our last question for today, at least at least uh -huh. until now, again from Golfo Vasiliu. Can I promote a really cool mentoring program for front-end developers? Uh, yes, absolutely. So of fast, course. so fast. <laughs> I, want, uh, I, want, I will not object that. <laughs> absolutely not. I am going to use uh, uh, in the chat room my, um, as well my, uh, da da da, where is it? my website, as I said, and the services I offer. Of course, it's a very new um, website, so it's not 100% ready yet, but you can definitely find uh, contact details and uh, uh, some information on what I offer. Um, so yeah, I, I, th I think I saw a question about if there are uh, online uh, tests or something yes, about from, uh, imposter syndrome from stuff. Maria Bloom, I think. Yes, absolutely. There are like uh, go for it. Google um, imposter syndrome mm -hmm. tests and things. You, you will find a lot. There are also a lot of books. Um, like for example, I absolutely recommend this: the Imposter Cure. Very very good book. Very helpful. Um, has a, a very good um, activities and exercises and uh, things uh, you know that help you self reflect and um, identify. Um, you know, reevaluate yourself and your thoughts. Um, so yeah, so uh, could we share our LinkedIn? Yes, go for it. Okay, is that okay? Yes, why yes. not? Why, why not? not? Yes, let's okay. connect. Let's we connect. have so, we have uh, one more question for you. Yes, more questions are coming oh, yes, from Keith Jill. Is it common to feel imposter syndrome when one holds a career position that usually is filled someone with post grad degrees when I did not even finish my bachelor's? Is it common for um, yes, of course. One holds a career and usually it's for someone with postgraduate. Uh, yes, 
yes this is this is a very common case yes so this is a common it's very similar to what i was saying that people that uh, you know get a position that they don't usually don't have the background that usually is required and so on so so it's it's very common um and is is kind of like understandable to have these feelings but the fact that you actually uh got this uh, position this this itself proves that you are the right person for this position so this is the the best way to battle that imposter feeling in this case okay so yeah it's but it's very common and um unfortunately uh, but again as i said by identifying your achievements acknowledging your strengths this is the, the best way to to battle such very specific uh imposter uh feelings Okay, so um, thank you very much, everyone, for your questions. Very, very interesting. Uh, I hope that was useful. Um, it was very introductory, um, I, I believe, but I think it was uh, the first stage for, for you to start kind of like um, questioning yourself about uh, imposter syndrome. Um, so, yeah, Elias. It's uh, time know. for the question to share the one year free subscription from JetBrains. And the question is? Yes, yeah, so the question is, I thought a lot about it. Um, so I don't know how big Star Wars fans you are. Just type yes or no in the chat room. Yes, for Star Wars. Yes, Woo Mandalorian. Yes. yes, yes, question please. Because they are searching, yes. searching on the internet now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the question is, what is the name of the uh, material that Mandalorian's armor is made of? Go for it. Uh, yes. Yeah, George Panaritos. Yay. Very good. Very good. So George Panaritos is uh, the fastest and wins what? <laughs> One year free subscription from Dead Brains. Very good. Congratulations, George. George, uh, you have to uh, ping me on LinkedIn so that I can send you the voucher. And now, from our speaker. Uh, from me, I, I offer uh, to anyone um, who, actually not anyone, to the, the five, five, four, P, uh, five, sorry, first five people that uh, are going to um, uh, register on my newsletter on my website i will offer a free coaching session on imposter syndrome so if you go to my oh, i'll share that with you scroll up to her uh, uh, website and find the newsletter da, 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 I'm, da, da. I'm 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 signing to that to you so here so if you scroll down to that uh, there is a place where you can register for in the newsletter i don't send uh, very many newsletters so don't worry that you're going to be bombarded with uh, things that you're not interested in, or hopefully you are um, so the first five people that are going to oh yeah I got a new uh, yes. already thank you so I am going to offer a um, free uh, session uh, on imposter syndrome and then uh, we will take it from there so thank you thank you thank you very much everyone uh, that uh, attended this uh, session. Thank you, Elias, for inviting me. And I'll pass the the last uh, bit to oh. to you, Master. Oh, what's up? <laughs> oh my oh, goodness! Yes. Oh, good old times. Yes, good old times true. when we were young and beautiful. That's true. That's true. <laughs> so this is uh, yeah. from that days. <laughs> and absolutely amazing. Please join us uh, on our community and follow us on the social media. Our next event will be the first days of March uh, from uh, a friend. He will tell us about his journey on uh, technical interviews uh, for Google, how he they found him, how, how he reached the third interview, all his trip until London. And please come on this event to hear his trip and uh, Learn how to prepare yourself if you are chasing your dream with uh, companies uh, as big as Google or Amazon or, I don't know, all the others on the IT world. So, thank you everyone for coming today here. It was a pleasure to have Athena, of course, my friend, and all of you who stayed for one hour and five minutes with us.
thank you very much for everything. So that's it from me, Athena. I don't know if you want to say something. I, um, uh, it was absolutely amazing. Amazing questions, uh, amazing audience. Thank you, thank you very much for inviting me, Elias. And it was, uh, it was uh, very, very nice. And uh, yeah, and I hope to see you again soon. Great. Right. Have a nice evening. Have a good Bye. Night. Bye. Bye.